and for the invitation. I'm very glad to be here and very honored uh, to participate in so uh, important conference, international conference. I am the president of this institution which has been uh, presented uh, by Irene and I very warmly thank uh, Dr. Irene Dacchia for inviting us. Um, she, she came to the Academy uh, a few months ago along with a colleague to visit our institution and uh, to, uh, we would like to introduce it to you all today. The Academy of Iron Novum is an international institute of classical and humanistic studies to which students uh, come from every part of the world, from all over the world. Also from countries uh, uh, remote from uh, classical uh, European uh, uh, culture. For example, from China, from uh, uh, India, Japan, Central Africa, uh, but also, of course, from every part of, the, of Europe, uh, Australia and New Zealand. They uh, are invited, uh, they um, pass an exam of course and an international competition and are supported by a, by a system of scholarship and they are invited to spend one or more years in the, uh, in the campus of the academy which is settled in uh, Villa Falconieri in Frascati, in the uh, immediate outskirts of Rome, in the very place where uh, Cicero uh, had his uh, own villa and brought uh, the Toscolana Disputaciones and also many other uh, philosophical works. And so, uh, mm, even they come from very different cultural backgrounds, uh, the students find in the classics a root common to all the humankind. And, so that they can recognize themselves in it and be able to recognize their own culture. Also, uh, when uh, a Chinese reads Seneca, he recognizes his own Confucius. And when an Indian guy reads uh, uh, Omer, he can recognize his own Bhagavad Gita or Mahabharata. And uh, all light in different forms of light. The multifaceted activities of the Academy will now be presented by my colleague Ignacio Armenia, who will also tell you about the great project that our Academy, supported by the Italian government and by many foundations all over the world, is pursuing a vast and extensive world campus for the humanities. Thank you. Hello to everyone and thank you very much. I thank uh, very much uh, the organizers of uh, the conference and uh, personally uh, for inviting us here. And uh, well, it is my my task now to show to you to present to you the Academia of Novum, as Professor Milano was already saying. And uh, well, I don't have enough time, I think, to give you the whole story and the whole history of the Academy. You just have to know that uh, it's an institution that uh, has more than three decades of history, and they, it, uh, has, it has many shapes uh, uh, during uh, its uh, history. It began in uh, Naples and then it grew, it moved to Latium more or less uh, 15 years ago. And here you can see some of the uh, pictures of the former seats. But uh, I think that uh, another, uh, one of the um, biggest steps uh, in the history of our academy it was uh, accomplished in 2016 when uh, with the help of uh, some uh, members of the Ministry of Education and Culture in Italy we finally were able to move to Frascati, to the old Tusku room as uh, Professor Milano was saying and uh, moved to the Borromean Villa, uh, Villa Falconieri which uh, was uh, built in the 16th century and then was uh, more remodeled again by Borromini where uh, we find uh, a very uh, specific place uh, where the students can uh, read in the, own, in, in the very air of that place the stories that they find in the books. We think that, uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful uh, seat, uh, it's a beautiful uh, building, and uh, the students can perceive uh, through their own eyes and live uh, there as if they were uh, living in a that they can experience the beauty that they find in classical texts, in uh, the 
environment of uh, Tusculum, of Frascati, which uh, is uh, in fact uh, the place, the very place where Cicero wrote his Tusculana Disputaciones, and, when, and where he thought of uh, joining together the uh, Paideia, the Greek Paideia, with the, the Philanthropia, so that he created and spread uh, very much in uh, uh, Roman uh, society this idea of humanitas. And uh, we think that the main basis of the education that we try to promote there is the humanitas, so this link between, uh, I said, uh, the Greek paideia and uh, the studies, uh, higher studies of uh, classics, uh, a deep understanding of uh, the message of uh, the ancient authors, uh, joined together with the philanthropia, with a sense uh, that uh, human beings are all members of a uh, are like limbs of a, of a body and that they can find different ways to engage in uh, uh, understanding in peace uh, through the uh, recognition of some uh, fundamental roots uh, of humanity. So we like to think of our school as uh, of a humani humanitatis officina. And this is a uh, uh, juncture, this is a uh, saying that we took from uh, the inspirers of this project, uh, which are mainly the uh, Renaissance scholars uh, who thought uh, that uh, through classical education uh, we could promote uh, not only uh, a sense of uh, different humanity, but also a way of uh, putting together different uh, people, different classes, also in the Renaissance, uh, you know that uh, this uh, education was a way for also lower classes to move forward. And uh, we here in the academy, we learn in the academy, uh, here you can only see some pictures that illustrate to you the daily work that we do, but uh, please know that you are invited to come to Frascati uh, to visit us. But uh, um, the, the students uh, have a scholarship and uh, they all, they don't uh, pay anything, they stay there for the whole uh, year and they can live uh, as in a sort of enlarged family. People coming from different places, as Professor Villano was saying, understand that the other is uh, just uh, as uh, we are, and they can understand, they can engage in a very human and uh, deep uh, uh, level. Um, of course, uh, uh, we also uh, have a, an advantage uh, position in, in Rome because we are near to Rome. We are also near to a very beautiful site, which is the site of Tusculum, where a big theatre is settled, the picture was uh, shown before. And uh, we often also have uh, scholars, uh, I mean, uh, uh, groups of uh, different universities and uh, also high schools uh, that come to the academy to spend uh, a week or even more with us, uh, and uh, they have excursions uh, also to in interesting sites. And uh, as, I, as I was saying, the, 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 the deepest meaning of the education that we try to promote is the joy, the, 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 the mix of uh, paideia and philanthropia, of ratio and foratio. And in this uh, case, uh, to achieve this goal, the education of languages is very important. Because uh, if we always are struggling uh, with languages, uh, Latin and Greek, uh, we will never be able to perceive uh, the voice and to hear the voice of the ancient authors. That is why we choose uh, as uh, uh, the means of communication in our academy, Latin and ancient Greek. All these students uh, communicate in Latin, they use uh, innovative methods that actually are based in the experience of Renaissance uh, education, and uh, they communicate in Latin, and uh, by doing so, they have this language, which uh, is of everyone, but it's not a language of any particular uh, uh, and uh, actual uh, state. Of course, using uh, English would have been really easier, at least in the beginning, but uh, it would have a connotation. While uh, Latin is this uh, universal language that, at least in uh, European culture and uh, Western culture, bind, bind the, the different generations of scholars so from uh, Cicero up to the uh, 19th century. We have uh, several uh, conferences uh, during the year of uh, many different uh, subjects uh, that I will try to illustrate. Uh, there you can see Mikael von Albrecht, uh, who is a member also of our scientific uh, council, and also Edgar Moran, 
uh, is a very important, one of the most prominent uh, uh, philosophers alive. He's uh, 102 years old, uh, but he's still very active and he often visits us uh, in uh, Frascati. And uh, we have also an important library which is growing also with uh, the donation of the different scholars. And most recently we had the donation of uh, Nino Bossellino, an important <coughs> scholar of uh, Italian literature, and also of Emil Zonda. And here you can see the latest uh, uh, library hall which we have, which was built uh, actually one year ago, uh, trying to uh, put together the tradition of the art of that villa, and we use a project uh, that uh, tries to connect itself with the, the uh, ancient uh, tradition, uh, artistic tradition of the villa. Well, I will um, not like to spend a lot of time talking about also our editorial projects. So we have a publishing house which deals not only with the teaching of ancient languages but also with philosophy and in general the different subjects related to culture. <clears throat> Another thing that we try to promote, which we think that is very important, is uh, the diffusion of uh, classical subjects uh, through arts. Because uh, if we are trying, as we like to dream, and I hope that everyone here shares this, this dream with us, uh, that we can afford, in the modern times, a new sort of renaissance which could reactivate and uh, also uh, tell to the modern times and the modern challenges uh, that uh, the ancient messages have still a, little, a lot of things to say. Italo Calvino, this uh, important Italian writer, said that uh, a classic uh, is uh, a book that uh, has not said everything that it has to say. And we think that uh, Latin and Greek authors are this the case for them. So we think that uh, in order to spread uh, the messages uh, of uh, these authors, so we have to use arts, music, uh, painting, and other also visual arts, because uh, as Plato famously said, beauty is the only idea that we can perceive through the senses. So in order to reach uh, the hearts of uh, also people that maybe don't have the preparation or are, uh, it would take many time, many years of course, to reach uh, to a level in which they can manage easily Latin and Greek sources, we have to use the bridge of arts. And that is why we promote also many different projects. We have uh, uh, musical projects, a uh, choir that is, uh, it puts uh, uh, ancient uh, uh, poetry, Latin and Greek poetry, into music, uh, which is mainly uh, Renaissance and medieval music, or at least inspired uh, in uh, the manuscripts and the printed books uh, of this long tradition, which uh, was uh, reactivated during the Renaissance, uh, which is uh, to, to teach uh, metrics uh, through music. Uh, because we have the matrix, of course, we have the rhythm in the verses, we just have to add the, the melody. And we have uh, some melodies also in manuscripts and printed books, as I said, uh, already from the 9th century uh, uh, of the common era. So we uh, promote as much as we can uh, different spectacles, uh, theatrical spectacles with uh, both uh, professional uh, uh, groups, but also uh, for didactical purposes, uh, we have uh, also different uh, concerts. Uh, we are now also engaging in a project uh, which is just at the very beginning, but uh, to make uh, movies out of uh, the classical sources, uh, movies that can speak uh, to today's viewers. And the first, uh, the first experiment that we do, uh, that we did, is uh, this catabasis, uh, the scensus ad inferos, which is a, an ensemble, so to say, of three great chapters of uh, Greek, uh, Latin, and Italian literature. Uh, we put the Nekia of, uh, of the Odyssey and uh, the book, the sixth book of the Aeneid, in which Aeneas goes to the underworld, and of course uh, some uh, chapters of the Inferno of Dante, so that uh, we can show that, that there's a link uh, between all these, uh, all these authors. This was done uh, with the help of a professional, uh, professional uh, uh, director who works uh, closely with us, uh, and it will be available in YouTube as we hope in the next uh, weeks, uh, so you will be, all be able to watch it and do your own 
uh, judgment. Uh, as you, I already told you, tell you that it's an experiment, so you have to be indulgent with it. But it was uh, it's an original experiment that has to grow because, uh, of course, we were speaking about music, about uh, uh, painting, and other arts, and the uh, cinema and also virtual arts are, of course, a part of uh, the modern uh, ways of expressing ourselves. Here you can see a painting which, uh, which was made by one of the painters that live with us. So we have this side project which is called Poikile. We have uh, right now living with us a group of uh, painters that communicate already in Latin because they learn Latin in order to communicate with the scholars and the students of our academy. And uh, they are always daily working on the translation into art of uh, the ancient subjects. Here you can see a poet in the middle which uh, is uh, a, like uh, um, being uh, seduced, so to say, by Apollo and Dionysus. And according to Nietzsche's uh, famous theory, he has to find the balance of these two gods so that he can create the spirit of tragedy again in the spirit of art through the uh, basic uh, feelings and instincts of uh, human uh, uh, nature, which are organized and sublimed by the figure of Apollo and the Muses. This is an original painting, which was made by, uh, I said, one of the painters that we with us, and who is the director of this Poikile project, which uh, every year gathers uh, painters from all over the world, and they stay with us for the summer, and they have summer courses, and from those we select some uh, that can stay with us, again with the scholarships, during the, the whole year. Excuse me if I am being, I'm uh, just giving you the summary, but I don't have uh, a lot of time, and uh, we think we're running out of time. We're fine. Well, um, again, I have to be quick. Uh, I will not uh, tell a lot of this, but uh, about this subject, but uh, the main thing is that we have to uh, face uh, modern challenges uh, through the inspiration, the everlasting inspiration of uh, the classics. So the classics were uh, a source of inspiration for many centuries, we were just seeing that, a very good example of it uh, with the representation of Prometheus and the Eagle. And one of the main problems I think today, and we think today, is that uh, a technological culture and scientific culture and humanistic culture are not dialogue anymore, are not in dialogue anymore. They are going in different roles, and the scientific culture doesn't uh, want to hear or is not interested in uh, what uh, scholars of humanities have to say, so they go like a train, not stopping, and uh, being also always every day also very uh, problematic also uh, uh, instruments that change the way in which we live and perceive the world daily, even uh, more in an exponential uh, growing uh, rate. And on the other hand, the humanities seem to be not uh, keeping up with the times. So we think that an important project should be, and we already do this with uh, several seminaries that we organize with the School of Higher Studies of Paris, to put uh, scholars of these two fields to dialogue and to find the common grounds in which they can discuss and they can uh, also uh, understand that uh, humanities have to also, of course, deal with the scientific and the technological thinking, but on the other hand, we need uh, the science and technology needs the compass of uh, humanistic studies so that uh, they know where they are heading. And uh, this is some, this one, I think, one of the most important challenges of today's world. And the humanities have to say something about it, have to uh, confront themselves with uh, these uh, uh, challenges. Another uh, fundamental challenge of modern world, of course, is the uh, um, coming together of the different civilizations, which maybe for centuries were not uh, so close, but now they wall, of course, is uh, growing, and uh, at some point it's also getting tighter, getting smaller, because now we have the possibility through internet, but not only through internet, also face uh, to face, uh, to engage uh, with uh, people whose cultures and the mindset and backgrounds are so different from ours. 
So if we don't want to go back to some uh, politics of uh, apartheid or of uh, that uh, sort of cold and safe distance uh, that uh, we usually use to approach to the other uh, civilizations, we have to find some uh, past uh, also experiences to uh, face this problem. And uh, we think that uh, an important resource to face these problems are the a chain of philosophers and thinkers that engaged in the problem of Concordia during the Renaissance, from thinkers like Nicolas, Nicolaus Cusanus, or Picus Mirandula, or Marcellus Vicinus, up to Johannes Bodinus and many other scholars and philosophers, were always during the Renaissance and some centuries after, were always trying to understand how to find the common grounds so that we understand that we, we feel that humanity is that humanity is, is one and that we are heading to the, to the same goals through different uh, roads and uh, in this aspect uh, we have been uh, promoting contacts uh, with uh, universities and institutions all over the world we did a very uh, an international conference uh, a couple of years ago, actually before pandemics, uh, was, uh, whose uh, name was Concordia Genevis Humani, the Concord of the Human Kind. Because in its best moments, uh, we have to uh, recognize this, uh, the Western civilization was always open and curious about the other people. Scholars like Picus Mirandula, or like uh, Nicolaus Cusanus, or many others, uh, who were speaking about the Pace Fide. They were very, very um, engaged with this problem of finding uh, common roots, common ways, common grounds for the uh, humanity. Here you see some scholars from India who came to our academy. <clears throat> and well, here you can see also uh, some pictures of a travel that we did, the one amongst many travels that we did to China, uh, in order to uh, have contacts with the movement of Neo-Confucianism that is uh, growing there and uh, it may thrive as we hope uh, even if of course as you all know there are, these are difficult times uh, in many places uh, but we hope that uh, through also there a renaissance of uh, their classical studies uh, mainly Confucian tradition we can find as Professor Milan was saying common grounds with for example the, the Stoic tradition Already Matthäus Ricci, when he went to, to, uh, to China, uh, he used uh, and he understood that uh, through the Stoic tradition, the Confucians uh, could also understand that uh, there are some uh, uh, common ideas uh, that we share with one another. In this, uh, here there are some other, other pictures. There also a group of students from China came to our academy, 60 students from 12 years old up to 20 years old who were with us uh, learning Latin. We established a department of uh, Latin and Greek uh, in an academy uh, there and also in a university, in, uh, in the Beijing Foreign Studies University. And this uh, was very moving, very touching to see these uh, young students uh, 12 years old, or even younger, speaking already in Latin and trying to understand that through this language they could also have friendship with the people from all over the world. They came and they stayed with us for one month, and this is an experience that we hope that we will be able to repeat also in the future. But in this uh, uh, very uh, subject, uh, we think that the Caucasus uh, has uh, a very important role because, uh, again, now we have this challenge of uh, coming together and finding ways of communication, but we should not leave uh, this uh, in uh, the hands of some uh, politicians or some traditions that only know uh, division and only know apartheid, that only know to put people together with the boundaries. We should uh, recognize that there was another tradition the tradition of the Concordia, and that this uh, tradition can be also, uh, can have its, its examples, uh, its, its historical examples, uh, in places like the Caucasus, which was a road across for cultures uh, during the centuries. So we hope, we're very happy also that this year we are 
having the first exchange with uh, the first student from, from Georgia who will come to our academy. And we hope that this is the beginning of a long lasting uh, also exchange with uh, the campus. So, just to finish, um, because I don't want to bore you with uh, all these uh, uh, things, uh, uh, and I would like to leave uh, five minutes to Professor Bilani to conclude. Uh, the place in which we are right now, we think that it's uh, quite uh, important, not only because uh, it has a, a long tradition linked to the humanities with Cicero and uh, so on, but also because during the Renaissance, uh, when they were very aware of this tradition, they, made, they built many villas, one of which, and the first one uh, to be built, is Villa Falconieri. But there are many others. Uh, here you can see an engraving of the 16th century, the late, uh, no, uh, early uh, 17th century, excuse me, where you can see the view of uh, the Albanian hills as they were. And uh, here you can see the 12 greatest uh, Tusculan villas, which in the past were built by, of course, uh, Cardinals, Popes, and so on, but now they may, they, some of them are private and some of them belong to the uh, Italian estate. But uh, here you can see the Google uh, map uh, version of the engraving that I was showing, and here you can see how close they are. In many cases, they have, they even share gardens of these events. And uh, last year we were very happy because uh, we were able to afford another the commission, the, 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 yes, the care of another villa, which is not so far from Villa Falconieri. And uh, it was the first important step uh, to the realization of, the, of this big project that we have. That is to enlarge the activity that, the activity that we already do in the academy to different poles, uh, different sites. So, The Italian government is already interested in this uh, project, uh, the Ministry of, of Culture and of Education. And uh, the idea is to create a world campus for the humanities, uh, a place where people that are interested in the classical humanities uh, could uh, go there and find like a sort of a harbor of uh, peace, understanding and friendship uh, in which they can cultivate uh, these uh, uh, studies with a new approach, an approach that can tell something through our times. Here you can see Villa Tusculana, which was the former, that is built on the ruins of the ancient Villa of Cicero, according to, the, to, to many archaeologists. Villa Falconieri, Villa Mondragone, which is the place where the, from where the Pope Gregory XIII published the, 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 the calendar. The Gregorian calendar with his wall in Capitalissimas. So it has also a very interesting, uh, uh, it's very important from the point of view of the history of sciences. So we would like to put there this uh, uh, institute for the dialogue of the two cultures, scientific and humanistic culture, and also in uh, another villa, maybe in the Villa Vecchia or Villa Parisi, we could put also the a school for the Renaissance of uh, Visual Arts, uh, which would be an enlargement of the project that we already have. And uh, also uh, an institute for the study of historical communication between different cultures. And we should go and see in the text historically what uh, the experiences of the past, so that we don't say, do the same errors, of course, but we also do, can try to uh, some, take some inspiration for new ways of uh, answering to modern problems. Um, I don't know if we have questions. No. Okay. So now I will give uh, just the floor to Professor Milata so that he can uh, conclude. And uh, I thank you very much for your attention. Si per vos lice tabellim aliqua verba latina facere, si cot uh, etiam uh, domina Irene, somma progatus brevissime, tantum dopo edam dicam, que pertinent ad uh, ea verba que iam fecit ignacius. E, me preserti indicere qua de causa nos venimus et gaudemus quod possimus quod possimus uh, hec vincula nectere cum Georgia. Nam uh, 
de curso seculorum, plurime, plurime fuerunt regiones, plurimi homines, cui conati sint una coniungere di diversas, diversos cultus e diversas razionis humanitatis. Et presertim postquam non solum greci, hoc fecerum, non solum romani, se postquam clausa est illa uh, Ateniensis Academia, anno quingentesimo, unde trigesimo, eh, filosofi uh, platonici eh, penetraron tusque ad intimam persiam, et ibi excepti sunt ad illo cosvo e rege, qui quidem uh, amicissime eos uh, recedit, et gradati mili potuero intensiam divulgare, diffundere e platonica disciplina, platonica mente, ma platonica placita. Atamen hic in Georgia, iam ante a iam secolo V, fuerunt qui eh, il platonismum, il neo novo platonismum, motita dicam, importaverant, imo sunt qui suspicentur quendam monacum georgianum convertisse aut scripsisse ilut corpus dionisiacum non è pseudo Dionisi, ma corpus areopagiticum. Et uh, secolo settimo, il califa e abbassidae edificarunt quasi domum sapientiae, vital dicma, quo quidem pene manus aut exercitus doctorum hominum convenit, ut con ut ex arabico in, pers in persicum, ex persico in, eh, in grecum, ex greco in persicum converterent monumenta literarum, monumenta humanitatis, it aut homines posse tinte leggere hoc vinculum, nos omnes con continere, nos omnes coniungere. E de inenziam Toleti et Federicus Secundus in Sicilia, de inenziam Conati sunt et i qui ad orientem solem verbum et i qui ad occidentem coniungere animo suo sin tildo concilio ferrariense et florentino. Se hic, hic in Georgia, in illo monasterio quod agelati nomen ducit, non è fuero homines qui literas neoplatonicas, qui literas grecas, colverunt, qui tradiderunt, qui aluerunt, tale eh, aureum, eh, tesaurum, rerum et internem gazam, penodis estradita. Ergo nos, pro certo avemus sacer, oie mane, eh, fuitunus ex professoribus, qui qui del locutus est del pace inter homines conciliand, in uh, fovendis literis et fovende humanitati. Bene, fovenda humanitate. E nos revera pro certo abemos irenem, ides acem, ventura nos et allaturam uh, bellus aureum. Olim nos europei occidentalis conati sum sfurari, aut rate, aut abduce, intulum bellus aureum, ut trasferremus in Grecia, se non sponte et benevolenzi et benignitate summa, irene es allatura in ut bellus aureum nobis, bellus veritatis et pacis, ut nomen eius ipsum declarat et manifestat. Grazie a tutti.